human traits that we inherit as human beings and all of us have it. So, and I asked her, I said, well, we have something that's common in us as human beings. I said, when you come from America, you go to China and you see children, a child is born, that child is going to cry just like a baby. The mother has to breastfeed the baby just the same. The baby wants to eat the baby. In fact, the mother doesn't have to teach the baby how to breastfeed. The baby knows automatically. It's looking for, say, Ma, I need to eat. I can't open my eyes, but his reaching, his mouth is reaching for the nipple, right? It's, it wants to eat. So no one has to teach that to the baby, and nobody has to teach the mother how to breastfeed, right? It's natural. It's a natural inheritance that Allah has put in us. Also, too, it's natural for a child, when a child is, is wrong, when, when, when somebody does a, a disjustice to the child, the child cries out. Even though the child can't say a word, it cries out. And it hollers and it screams and it says, look, I want justice, right? That's a natural trait that Allah has put in every child. So that's a common human experience that we have. So I said, no matter what uh, race or color or whatever, if, if, it's a natural, if it's a human being, we're going to share in the same human experience. She said, yeah, you're right. You're right. So no matter what language the child speaks, no matter what color the child is, we share in a human experience. So this is a natural uh, human inheritance that Allah gives us as human beings. It's natural. It comes naturally. Allahu Akbar. It is uh, also, too, DNA. DNA, like I said, is our, is, our, is our codes, our human codes, our natural codes, our habits, our character traits. But it's important to know that the environment can actually manipulate or change your DNA codes. Did you all know that your environment that you put in can actually change your DNA code? It is reported that the prophet, peace be upon him, he said, Every child that is born is born upon the fitra. It is his parents that makes him otherwise a Christian, a Jew, etc. It's his parents, right? And as I was talking with uh, Imam Ajin, you know, we get into a habit, of, you know, because I, because I wrote uh, every, because it, because it reads when you when you read the hadith, it says every child is born a Muslim. But the actual, the correct is, is abun, born upon the fitra, the natural nature of the human being. And when the human being is in its natural nature, it automatically is Muslim by nature, right? But the reason why they do that, they say Muslim, 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 is because that competitive nature to compete and to, to, to compete against Christians and Jews. See, they put it in the... Christians and Jews, so they put in there, instead of putting what it actually means, it says fetch out a natural human being, which is a natural Muslim. And Imam taught us that a natural, another entry for Muslim would be what? Natural human being, right? And it's fetch out. So every child is born upon the fetch It's natural, upon its natural nature. But so the environment can also be a parent, right? The environment can be a parent. The environment can be a parent. I was raised in South Central Los Angeles. So a lot blessed me to have both of my parents in the home. But there were several kids in the neighborhood who didn't. They didn't have their parents in the home. So guess what was their parents? The streets, that's right. So they didn't have their uh, parents in the home, so the streets became their parents. The streets had more influence on them than their own family members. The streets became their parents. So when the prophet said, every child is born upon the fitra, so that same child once had a physical parent, whatever the situation was, the parent weren't, wasn't in their life, but it was the environment. The environment made them, you know, gang members. The environment made them thieves. The environment made them... Uh, selling drugs. It was the environment. The environment. Because I was raised in an environment where all that was going on. Gangs. And, you know, they said, they said, man, uh, how do you do it, man? You, you, 
you around Crips and Bloods and you in South Central, all around them gangs, you know, they say, man, how do you, how do you survive? How do you do that? I said, man, the gang, I ain't worried about the gangs because my father and the FOI, they the, they're, that's the gang that I'm worried about. I don't want to have to deal with that gang. I can deal with the Crips and the Bloods, but I don't want to have to deal with the FOI and, and that gang. I said, shoot, that's that. Look, I can deal with Crips and Bloods. That's not a problem, you know? But the environment had it. Yes, sir. First time I had that experience, the gang, the gang gangers we used to ask, would ask me what I'm writing. I immediately said, with all confidence, I said, I'm a Muslim. That's right. And I know that's that. right. I noticed the position. Yes, sir. That that's and right. I didn't have no that's absolutely and right. I said, I'm a Muslim. That's right. That's right. You know and that? and like he said, see I'm what? A little guy too. And see, in the neighborhood, they knew. They said, they said, oh, he's a Muslim. Oh. They said, no, don't mess with him. No, 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 no. No, leave him alone. And every now and then you have one that's test and they want to act crazy. Yeah, exactly. So they had to find find out why you don't mess with the Muslim, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. So the environment can act as a parent. The, the environment can act as a stronger influence over that child or even a, a, an adult. The environment can be a parent to an adult. Especially if you don't know how to parent yourself. Yeah. Environment can act as, as a parent, right? Allahu Akbar. Allah what is the number one, uh, we talked about property, inheriting natural things, but what is the number one inheritor for poor people, African Americans? What's the number one thing that we inherit? Uh, huh? Debt. Okay, yeah, good. <laughs> Say it again. Somebody said it too. Debt. Debt. That's the number one thing that we inherit is debt. And like you said, well, you know, if, if some of us have some property of value, what happens? We start fighting over the property and it ends up going in probate, right? And we fight over it. And, and it's only what? In one house and you got all these, you got a hundred people in the family fighting over one property, right? Come on, it's only so much that you can get. But the ignorance, we so ignorant, you know, we think, we, you know, our perception is so jacked up, but we fighting over pennies, over crumbs. And the lawyers get all the money, right? Or you have another situation where you have maybe so many family members and they have acres in the family. They got hundreds of acres in the family, right? So what happens is the slick come to one of the members in the family and you got all these, you got a hundred acres and you only got five members in the family. And this one slick sucker gets one of them to sell. Right? And they mess up the family inheritance because one person, and they end up giving them crumbs. And they end up get going in court and they end up losing, losing the property, losing their inheritance. Right? Right? So, but for the most part, we inherit debt. We inherit debt. So even in those situations, after, the, after they go through the court and all that, family ends up with nothing, maybe a little bit of nothing. And, and that money, whatever they get, may not last throughout that year. So we inherit debt. And the Elijah Muhammad, in one of his prayers, he used to say, he said, I seek refuge in thee, O Allah, from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. Right? Because that's all debt is, is oppression. That's all it is, is oppression of men, right? Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah 2, I'm sorry, Surah 5, Ayat 3, Allah says, Al-Yawma akmautu lakum dinakum wa akmamtu alaykum nitmati wa raditu lakumu al-Islamu dinu. So Allah says in the Quran, this day I have perfected for you your religion and have completed my favor upon you and have approved or preferred for you al-Islam as religion. Right? Mm -hmm. So here in this verse, Allah is telling us that he has preferred and perfected deen, deen al-fitra, deen al-fitra, your natural inheritance. 
But is he saying this uh, just for the Muslims? No, this is for humanity. So the religion of Al-Islam is a religion for humanity, right? And Allah says what? He says, this day I have perfected it. So Allah is telling us that he is giving us something that's perfected. It's perfect. He's giving us something that is perfected. It's perfect. So Allah is saying, I'm giving you something that's perfect. But guess what? Allah is saying, I have preferred it for you. So you have a choice whether to accept perfection or reject it. Right? So Allah is not obligating us to it. Allah is not forcing us to it. He said he's preferred it for us. He says, I have, I have perfected it. You don't have to perfect it. I've perfected it. So when Allah, the creator of Lord of all the worlds, who created us as human beings, who knows our nature as human beings, he said, I have perfected this for you. Right? Allahu Akbar. And in Surah uh, 68, I have one through six. Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Noon, by the pen and what they inscribe or what they record or write. You are not, O Muhammad, by the favor of your Lord, a madman. Indeed, for you is a reward uninterrupted or continuous. And indeed, you are of great moral character or, or exalted moral character. So you will indeed, soon you will see and they will see which of you is afflicted by a devil or a, a madman. Sadaqallahu Adeem. So in this surah, this surah uh, 68, it is reported, it said that when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he first received revelation, the first command came to him to read, Ikra, read. That was the first uh, revelation. So there was a time period where uh, some say maybe, uh, they say over six months to a year maybe. But there was a time period where he hadn't received revelation. So word it went out that, you know, oh, Muhammad, he's reporting that he's the prophet. You know, he's talking about he the prophet. He, he the angel Jabril came to him. Has he gone mad? He's, Muhammad is Majnoon. That's what they were saying. Muhammad is Majnoon. Majnoon. He's, he's, he's going crazy. He's, so the prophet, peace be upon him, began to doubt his own self. He, he began to kind of wonder. He said, well, wait a minute. Now, I know it was the angel Jabril. The, my wife, we consulted. We, so I know this was the angel that came to me, but am I tripping? Am I going mad? What's going on? So Allah consulted him in this verse. He said, you are not a madman, and you are of the highest moral character. Right? You are of the highest moral character. And Allah says, soon you will see and they will see that you are of high moral character. Right? So in this verse, Allah is revealing to us that Muhammad the prophet comes with high, excellent moral character. And, you know, as we know, the history of the prophet, he was known as what? A Sadiq. And El Amin. And, 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 and the Hunafa. Al-Hanif, right? As-Sadiq means what? The, tr the, uh, the truthful. He never told a lie. Uh, el Ami means uh, the trustworthy, like uh, Imam uh, was speaking earlier. And the Hanif, the, the, the upright in, in moral character. Upright in moral character. So Allah is telling us that he's given us a perfect match. He's given us the perfect way of life and the perfect character, right? Mm -hmm. And he says, what? But, you know, this is for you. I perfected that. So Allah is giving us a, the per perfect religion, a perfect way of life, and a perfect teacher and a perfect example on how to live your life as a human being. Because he has already put in your inherent nature righteousness, goodness. So now Allah is saying now, here are the pairs, here are the, the two pairs that you can keep that goodness alive. Allahu Akbar. Allah. So Allah say, here is, is the, the, the way, and here is your teacher. And you can have a perfect life, right? right. But Allah says what? He doesn't, la ikra hafidin, let there be no compulsion in religion. So Allah doesn't force us to accept this way. He, you know, there are many other 